my name is Aftab Larji and I'm going to be your host for today's remarkable interview. Um, today on the account of National Mathematics Day, we are on the account of the birth anniversary of Sir Ramanujan Sir. Um, our Delhi College is organizing this wonderful interview and we are extremely excited to see the two important guests amongst us, Sir Srinivas Ramanujan and Sir G.H. Hadi. I welcome you all sir, to your sir. I hope that today from your experience in the field of mathematics, we are going to get to learn a lot. And I welcome you sir. I want to put sir G. H. Hardy on in the spotlight. And I want to ask a few questions. A little, I, I have, literally I have the curiosity to ask on that. So the first question which I want to ask you, so what is it G. H. in your name, G. H. Hardy? The GH stands for Godfrey Haru, but lovely people call me Haru. Okay, sir. Um, so I want to know like, something about you as a personal note. So um, could you just tell our audience where and when were you born? I was born on 7th Feb, 1877, Great Lake, England. Okay. So um, do you want to put a, uh, put a little light on your personal life, on the personal life stories, something like that, which you want to tell us? I was uh, born and brought up in Finlay, England by my father, Isaac Hardy, and my mother, Sophia Hardy. Okay, sir. So, uh, like, um, so many students are sitting in our auditorium today, and um, if you ask anybody of them, they will say that, uh, if I ask them, like, were you passionate about maths from the beginning? They will say, no, we hate maths. <laughs> but, and I think uh, most of the people will say that answer only. But um, I want to ask you, sir. So were you passionate about mathematics from the beginning? Not really. Uh, it was while studying in Trinity College, Cambridge, where I was born towards continental mathematics, and then later I contributed towards number theory and analysis. Also, I am a pure mathematician, and I uh, don't actually like applied math. Oh my God, those mathematicians who do not who like applied mathematics will take a count of that. <laughs> so I want to ask you, how many number of books? Papers have you written? Altogether, 300 papers and 11 books up till now. Oh my god, that must be the entire number of books which I have ever read in my life. <laughs> so, uh, with such excellence in your field, uh, were you in the world? Where did you get your first job and was it difficult to find that one? I think any, anybody right now would like to hire him with any amount. Uh, it was in 1906. When I first started as a lecturer in Trinity College, Cambridge, but no, it was not difficult to get into the college because it was my that is where I was studying. Okay, sir. So now uh, we all know that how good you are in maths and how much you have contributed in the field of mathematics. So, but there is always somebody which we always look up to. We have somebody who is like somebody we want to become something like, but we always have somebody in our mind uh, who we look up to as a mentor. So. Do you have somebody like that? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Sir, can you just tell us who that person is? His name was Augustus E. H. Love. He's, uh, uh, from him, I learned the concept of analysis and he told me the actual meaning, the true meaning of man. So you have uh, contributed in the field of mathematics at such a remarkable level and uh, you have discovered so many things. Uh, even our, daughter, uh, our principal also has said that in, the, in her in the starting work that you have invented so much and discovered so much to help us to learn a lot about mathematics. But among all those discoveries, do you have one discovery which you love the most or you are excited the most about? <laughs> um, I remember in, in early 1913, I received an unusual letter from a club at the Madras Port Trust and it was none other than my good friend here and my greatest discovery, Raman Vijan. Thank you so much, G.H. Hari sir, for your kind words and your, your words into the side of the mathematics and your journey of all these things. Now, we want to ask a few questions to Sir Raman Vijan. 
somebody who, who was in the Earth University to celebrate National Mathematics Day. So we are extremely honored to have you. And as an Indian, we see you as such a big person. And we take so much of inspiration and courage from you to do what you have done in your life in terms of field of uh, in mathematics. Sir Ramanujan, I want to ask you this question. Everybody wants to ask you. What was your first inclination towards math? How was it? Well, I just couldn't uh, ignore the patterns in nature. Maybe in nature or in numbers. Uh, all the positive integers were like my closest friends. An infinite number of them, a bad idea. Anyways, math always found its way to me, through God. And I remember this when I was a young kid. We had a pay guest at our home who uh, introduced me to this concept of advanced trigonometry. I enjoyed it a lot and I started upon developing uh, my own theorem. So it always happened that uh, books give us knowledge and because of books we get to discover ourselves and adapt different dimensions of life. So is there any book which has opened different dimensions to you and help you in your mathematics career? Yes, indeed. I have read the synopsis of Elementary Results. It was really a good book and it ignited me and drove me one step closer towards me. Uh, I should ask you this, but uh, we are curious to know this as well. Like, so, uh, how were you at your school or college with respect to your grades or like? Well, I was actually a bright student and I used to get good marks. I also fetched a lot of scholarships which I eventually happened to lose because I couldn't keep up with my friends uh, in all other subjects except <laughs> Obviously, sir, you must be the top of your math because of you, we are learning math so much. So, I want to ask you, like, um, when I was researching about you, I got to learn that when you got, um, when you had to travel to England, there was some sort of conflict or something has happened. Can you just tell us, uh, bring us light to that incident as well? So I am basically a Brahmin and crossing seas is forbidden for us. Which means if we cross the sea, we lose our religion. So there was an early opposition to the idea of me going to England. Okay, so uh, I want to know more about it. Uh, can you just tell us like, how did you resolve this problem? Well, uh, one fine day or as I should say, one fine night, my mother had a dream in which uh, she saw our goddess, Namagiri who instructed her not to stand between me and my dreams and to just let me go. My god, that is something very uh, intriguing. I think that's what uh, tells us all the young girls who are sitting inside the auditorium today that uh, whenever you have a dream and a passion in your life, you should always follow that. And there shouldn't be anything which should come between you in terms of education or in terms of any academic opportunity or any opportunity in life. We need to just focus and have faith in ourselves and faith in God and just to go forward, I think so. And also our parents play such an important role in that by encouraging us and to pursue our dreams. I think so. Same thing has happened to you as well, right? If, at all your, if not your mother, you have never traveled to England and you have not got this great chemistry between you guys. So I want to know, like, how did you come across the hub? Perhaps a letter. Oh my god. Okay, back in the days, letters was the most important means of communication. If it was, it was in this century, then obviously a text message or an Instagram text would do a good thing, right? <laughs> Mr. Hari, I want to know, how would you would describe Ramanujan's letter? Honestly, at first, I thought it was a fraud, but it was fabulous. Some of the... Some of the theorems, defeated me completely. It was 9 pages and it was amazing. Obviously sir, it is from Sir Ramanujan, an Indian mathematician, so this letters would have such a huge amount of knowledge into that to blow anybody's mind. Maybe you are from any place of the world. Any any piece of work from my Indian will always blow anybody's mind. So I want to know um, about like uh, whenever there is a collaboration and when, uh, when there is a collaboration between these two individuals, Sir Ramanujan and Sir Hardy, there is always a sense of conflict, correct now? So, I want to know, like, are there any conflicts between you guys? Yes, in fact, we are people with different personalities. He is a religious man and I am an atheist. He believed in intuitions and I believed in proofs and rigor. But eventually we worked it out and here we are. 
obviously if that that worked it out and we got to learn so much from you guys. But that we have come to I have come to my last question. I would like to know this question, very interesting question. So what's with the number one seven two nine? It's the smallest number that can be expressed as sum of two cubes in a different way. Oh my god, I think it takes a bigger to digest that. <laughs> with that, we have come to an end of the interview. So it was such an honor to have both of you amongst us in our in the Olympic College today for this remarkable interview. We got to know and learn you guys about to learn, learn about you guys in terms of personally and professionally. It must have definitely given an insight to all the young mathematicians, the students of Tempe College, and maybe from other colleges who are sitting in the auditorium today. Um, I take this honor and try to be your uh, host today. Uh, I got to, it was my honor and a privilege to interview you guys. Thank you so much for you, sir, for having uh, us among us today. Thank you, sir Ramanujan and sir Ahadi. I would like to request all the people to give a big round of applause to sir.